I want you to take your Bibles tonight, and uh, I want us to review together how it was when those first missionaries went out. You know that the term missionary does not appear anywhere in the Bible. But we certainly have missionaries. We have those that went out, those that were sent, and those that took the message and took what they were given, the Great Commission, and as a result of going out, souls were saved, uh, lives were changed, and in cities, churches were established. I want you to turn with me to Acts chapter 14. Acts chapter 14. And as you're turning, let me uh, bring you up to speed on what has happened. Paul and Barnabas have been sent by their local church. Every one of our missionaries who come through here recognizes the authority of the local church. I was taught in Bible college what I had learned from my parents as I grew up in a pastor's home, the primacy of the local church. A lot of people talk about only the family of God or the kingdom of God. But they never talk about the local church, the church of God. The church of God is a local called out assembly of baptized believers who accompanied themselves together for the purpose of carrying out the Great Commission and, and fulfilling God's plan for this age. And I thank God for every Bible-believing, independent, Baptist, local New Testament church that also believes in missions. I believe this church was born in the white heat of revival and of missions. I believe that what God has continued to do in and through this local church is uh, because of missions. It is a missionary church with a missionary heart and a missionary vision. And we never want to get too far from that. Paul and Barnabas were sent by the church. Of course, they're sent by the Holy Spirit, but they were sent out. Under the authority of and under and with accountability to the local church at Antioch. The church at Antioch was a good local church. The church at Antioch was where they were first called Christians. The church at Antioch was where they had the scriptures and preserved the scriptures that have come down to us today. The Bible that you hold in your hand, the King James Bible, is a result of the preservation of scriptures which took place right there in Antioch. Our scriptures are of that Byzantine uh, orientation. And because of that, I believe in the local church. I believe that the local church is God's institution for this age. And you ought to be a part of the local church. If you're going to be missionary hearted, this is the place to be. There, as they were about to return from that first missionary journey, Paul and Barnabas came back through some of the towns and there at Lystra, he was exhorting them to repentance. He was saying God's fingerprints are all over His creation. And they began to think of Paul and Barnabas as being deity themselves, and they were not. But then when they objected, they, they turned and with, the, with the, the, um, the certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium came and persuaded the people, and they stoned Paul. And in verse 19, it's interesting, they drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. I believe that this is the same occasion referred to in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. I knew a man, whether in the body, out of the body, don't know. I believe he was referring to that experience where perhaps he actually, his, his spirit left his body. He went into the presence of the Lord. He heard things that he was not uh, uh, allowed to utter later on. Came back and he stood up and as the disciples stood around about him, he rose up and came into the city and next the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby. Think about that. He didn't sit down and, and produce a film about dying and going to heaven and coming back. He didn't write a bestseller about it. Now I know I'm treading on thin ice because some of you are just waiting for the next book or the next film about somebody who died, came back. And, and there are some actual cases of people who were clinically dead. I talked with a man yesterday who was clinically dead for a period of time. The doctor said, you were gone. And he came back. And that's wonderful when God gives us another opportunity. But I want you to know that everything we need to know about what God wants us to be and do, we find out from this book right here. We don't have to hear another voice 
in an ethereal experience. It's all right here. We're told to go into all the world and to preach the gospel to every creature. Praise God. So he got up and he departed with Barnabas to Derby. Why? Because Paul was the kind of person that we ought to be. He was determined to do the work of God, to keep his feet moving, to keep going forward and, and continue the work that the Lord had laid before him. When they had preached the gospel to that city, taught many, they returned again to Lystra, to Iconium, and Antioch. Think about that. Thinking about going back to the scene of the crime. But they went back there anyway, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. In verse 22 when it says, through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. If I were like some cult leaders, I would say there's the plan of salvation right there. That is not a summary of the plan of salvation. What that is, is a pictorial of the journey that we are on. There's only one way to God, and that's through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ as our Savior. This is not a plan of salvation, but it is saying that from the moment of receiving Christ until the moment He calls us home, you're going to be on a trip. You're going to be on a journey. And guess what? There are going to be some bumps in the road, but God's grace is sufficient. And so through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. It may be along the way some things happen to you that don't feel so good, that don't seem so nice, that you don't like to write home about, but it's still going to happen and God's grace is going to be sufficient to bring you through. Some people are going to let you down. They let Paul down. Some people are going to say things against you. They said things against Paul. Some people are going to try to kill you or stop you in your tracks. The world, the flesh, and the devil are going to fight against you just like they fought against Paul, but keep on going like Paul did. Through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. And when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. And after they had passed through Pisidia and came to Pamphylia, and when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down to Italia and thence sailed to Antioch, from whence they had been recommended to the grace of God for the work which they fulfilled. I want you to frame that phrase. For the work which they fulfilled. The work that they fulfilled. Success is not what you think it is, or what I think it is, or what you say it is, or what I say it is, or what somebody else writes a book about. Success is knowing and doing the will of God. Knowing and doing the will of God. God has a wonderful plan for each one of us. He has provided for us the wherewithal by which if we submit to Him, we can know His will and we can do His will. It doesn't matter if people applaud you. It doesn't matter if people take a, a poll and a judge you to be successful. That does not matter. All that matters is that we hear the voice of God through the Word of God and that we obey that voice. We do what God says through the Word of God. God wants you to be the very best husband or wife, the very best father or mother, the very best worker, the very best Christian, the very best church member that you can be by the grace of God. He will enable us to do His work. And when we have done that, it doesn't matter if our name is up in lights. It doesn't matter if anybody else knows our name or knows anything about us. God knows our name. God knows who we are. God knows what He's called us to, what He's given to us to do. And we just keep going. We just keep going. We just keep going. Every once in a while in my lifetime, I've been called the Energizer Bunny. And I don't know why. I can't figure it out. I believe this, though. Until I stop breathing, I ought to keep going for God. Amen. I don't believe there's any reason for me to do anything other than that. Amen. When they came back, they came back to the church where they had been recommended to the grace of God, the place from which they had been sent. And they came back to report on the job that they had completed for the glory of God. By God's grace and for His glory. And when they were come, they had gathered the church together. They rehearsed all that God had done with them and how He had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. And there they abode long time with the disciples. I'm going to give it to you one, two, three real quickly, but first let's pray. Father, fill me now with the Holy Spirit. I pray that what you give me to say to the folks tonight and those that will be watching on the internet, those that will be listening by CD, I pray, God, that, that this may be exactly and precisely what the Spirit of God will use to drive deep into our hearts and souls the conviction that there is a wonderful plan that you have for us and help us by your grace 
and for your glory to fulfill that, to finish the job in Jesus' name. Amen. There is anything in New Testament missions, it has to do with that church that sends and that church that then receives back the missionaries with the report. Tonight we heard wonderful blessings from each and every one of our missionary families. We heard from each and every missionary that God has blessed in some wonderful way. Some were blessed with their family, some with their converts, some with their fellowship, some with their ministry, some with the supply of their needs as God has promised. But in every case, God has supplied, God has done something, God has blessed. And we give Him the glory for all of this. When they returned to the place from which they had been sent, the place of recommendation, the place to which they were responsible, they came and they rehearsed, it says. They reported, I believe they reported accurately what had been done in and through them. We know that God has done a wonderful thing for us when Jesus died on the cross. And then He has done a wonderful thing in us when He saved us. It's a glorious thing. This morning, many decisions were made in hearts, different decisions. One man came weeping. And I knelt with him and I prayed with him. And he confessed to me what he, he believed God wanted him to be. And all of it is a transformed life. And then I cannot share with you. But God is all over this place and God is doing things. There are so many God connections that I cannot even share with you. That God is doing right here and right now. Because people that know other people and people who's crossed, who've crossed other paths of people. And God is doing this. He's doing it in a wonderful way. And every time He does that, it's like a, a little light goes on and like a little bell gets rung. And, and what I'm hearing is, that, see, I'm in charge. God's in charge. See, I'm, I'm still working. I'm still, I'm letting you know that this is not, this work here is not the work of man. And the work that is done by anyone who's called by God is not a work of man, not done in the energy and the witness of the flesh. When you go to New York City and when you're reaching out to Muslims, God is going to cross your path with certain people. And somebody knows somebody and there's a connection here and a connection there. Whenever you're working at the fairs and whenever you're working with the inmates that are coming out, whenever you're working with the deaf, whenever you're working in Australia, whenever you're working uh, with your ministry with prisoners, whenever you're working with your ministry of, of reaching those that have become wrecked by the sin of sexual addiction, God's going to cross paths so that we meet people, we hear certain things, we meet certain individuals, individuals and we know only God could have done that only God could have put that together God has given us a ministry of that nature where he keeps on reminding us that this is not our ministry this is his ministry this is not our work this is his work we are we're just privileged to be part of it I am never ceasing to be amazed at how God is doing that again and again but we have to have an understanding of to whom we are responsible we are debtor as Brother Gabe pointed out, we are debtor to so many people. God has put us in a situation where we are not an island. We can't just say, oh, I'm going to go it alone. I'm going to do this thing by myself. I've known people in the ministry, they did not want to interact with or cooperate with anybody. And I'm not talking about compromise. I'm not talking about cooperating with liberals and, and the wicked. I'm talking about they didn't want to get along with anybody. They didn't want to cooperate with anybody because for whatever reason, they just wanted to go it alone. And I know that really, we are not an island. Really, we are connected. We're connected to so many different individuals. And here Paul and Silas come back. They return to the place where they were recommended they acknowledge their responsibility. When they came back to that local church, they didn't come back and say, well, we've outgrown this. We don't need you anymore. There was a time when a certain great preacher, and I, I still, I recognize uh, how God used this preacher in a great way, but that preacher said, I don't, I don't need the rest of those people anymore, and he decided to go his own route. And I, I believe that he was already heading down the wrong road, but when he said that, I knew he was on the wrong road. I knew he was going the wrong way. Because there never comes a time when we don't need the other people that God has put in our path that we're supposed to be working with. People we're supposed to be connecting with. And, uh, and uh, th there are, in, just among our missionary families, so many different individuals. We have printers and missionaries and, and different ministries that are all interconnected. Because we're all serving the same Lord Jesus Christ. We are doing the same work in different places, but we are all under that 
responsibility. We're all under that connection. They rehearsed. They reported, I think, accurately. I don't see anything to the contrary. They told the truth. They told exactly what they faced. You know, not every, every place I go to preach do I see a lot of people get saved, but I do see some people get saved some places. And so when I do, I, I share that. When somebody doesn't get saved, I'm disappointed. But we need to be accurate about our reports. I, I have to say that over the years, I've known some wonderful missionaries. I've also known some crooks. And I've known some guys that they got out on the mission field and they had a bunch of nationals working for them and they would take the numbers of the decisions by those nationals. They would add them up. They would claim them as their own. They would send them back in their prayer letter. And people said, oh, that's wonderful, hundreds and thousands and so on and so forth. And actually, the Lord gets the credit, but they were taking the credit from the Lord. They were stealing from the Lord. Not from those nationals, but they were stealing from the Lord because they weren't accurate. They weren't telling the truth. When we come back and we rehearse, we need to tell the truth. And number three, as they came back, they spent long time. It says they abode long time with the disciples. That means they took the time that was necessary to retool, to refresh, so that they would be better when they went out on the next journey. Now, we know what happened. In the ensuing chapter, there was, uh, of course, a controversy that was settled in the council at Jerusalem about reaching Gentiles and what Gentiles uh, should, uh, should, should not do. We understand that. And then at the end of that chapter, they get ready to head back out on the missionary trail. And Barnabas says, I'm going to take John Mark. I'm going to take John Mark. And Paul said, no. And at that point in time, they had such a, such a sharp difference that out of it, they parted ways. But the good thing is, there came two missionary journeys out of this. Two completely different missionary groups out of this. I believe that God even works through the controversies and the difficulties that we have. I believe that God is sovereign. I believe that God has a way for the lost to come to Christ and be saved. And sometimes it may be not because of us, but in spite of us. The one thing that I am looking forward to someday is that when I have finished, finally laid down for the last time my armor on this side, and I have sheathed that sword, for the last time, I'll be standing in the presence of the Lord. And it doesn't matter what assessment others may have about my ministry, about the years that I've uh, been serving the Lord. That doesn't matter. All that matters is what Jesus says in that moment. Everything I've been doing for nearly 50 years now will all come down to this one thing. When I stand in His presence, I want to hear Him say, Well done, good and faithful servant. That's what I want to hear. I want to hear Him say to me, that I was obedient, that I was submissive, that when he said, I want you to go, I said yes. And I didn't give him reasons why not. But rather, I yielded, I submitted to. Rather than trying to, to give some other plan, some other program, some plan B, just going with what he said. That's what I want to hear. I want to hear him say, well done. You did what I told you to do. You obeyed. We're not going to be rewarded because we're so creative. We're going to be rewarded because we were compliant because we were submissive because we did what the master said my bible says i'm a slave I, I i know that's repugnant to many of you but my bible says i'm his slave a slave has no rights a slave makes no decisions a slave doesn't own anything a slave just does whatever the master says and king jesus is my master and He's the master of everyone who yields and submits to Him. And He can do wonderful things in your life if you just give yourself to Him. Why, he'll, he'll just absolutely wear us out for His glory. And praise the Lord, someday in His presence we'll hear Him say, Well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. Would you bow your head and close your eyes? Every head bowed. You've been viewing a service at Central Baptist Church. We never dismiss the service without clearly presenting the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is, that Jesus came to this earth and sinlessly lived for 33 years before He voluntarily gave His life. He died on the cross, He was buried, He rose from the dead, and He's alive forevermore. Through the shedding of His blood and through His victory at uh, the, the empty tomb, Jesus Christ now offers salvation to you. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
Would you pray right now from your heart to God and ask Him to save you? Something like this. Dear God, just pray, Dear God, I admit that I'm a sinner. I admit that I'm a sinner. I deserve to pay for my sins. I deserve to pay for my sins. I believe Jesus died to save me. I believe Jesus died to save me. Right now, I receive the Lord Jesus Christ into my heart as my personal Savior. Right now, I receive the Lord Jesus Christ into my heart as my personal Savior. Please take away my sins and take me to heaven when I die. Please take away my sins and take me to heaven when I die. Did you pray that prayer? Did you mean it? Wonderful. I want you to get in contact with us and let us know of your decision. Now, if you've already been saved, I want to encourage you to live the life that God would have you to live according to His Word. If you desire more instruction, more information, we'll be happy to supply it to you. We like to talk to you. The information is right here, and we'd love to speak to you. If you have any spiritual needs whatsoever, may God bless you.